Um, so for me, as I told you, my name is Joseph Goldberger. I'm heading the Sex and Science Liaison Office. This is one of the representational offices of the Free State of Saxony, representing the science uh, landscape of Saxony abroad. Uh, I'm very happy that also my colleagues in Uzbekistan, Mongolia, Vietnam, uh, and India shared the information. So today, although our presentation is mainly focused on students of on, in Taiwan, we are very happy that also students from other countries are attending. And I hope that this presentation is also going to be fruitful for you. Um, to give you an idea, Saxony is a uh, state, one of the 16 states in Germany, in the center east of Germany. Uh, all together in the state, including the University of Arts and Music, uh, there's some 22 universities in this state. Um, important for you, there's about there's 10 universities which have a strong focus on technology uh, and where you can study technology related subjects. Uh, you'll find three uh, clusters of excellence in the free state of Saxony, and you will find 67 non-university research institutions. This is an especially large number. So the research intensity, uh, density in Saxony is very, very high. So you have many uh, good options for employment for postdoc uh, work in non-university research institutions, just as well as in universities. Um, the two major centers in Saxony are the state capital, Dresden, relative to the center. For our Taiwanese in, uh, audience, you probably heard about Dresden recently in media. That's this one city where TSMC, IGDN, decided to invest and is building up its big fab. Uh, the other industrial center, commercial center, would be the city uh, Leipzig, and the third uh, very important city would be the city of Chemnitz. Uh, altogether in Saxony, you find a very dense infrastructure in semiconducting, uh, very evolved uh, supply chain. Uh, the most evolved, uh, most com complex uh, supply chain in semiconducting in the whole of Europe. Our three universities represent these three important cities, the three important capitals in Saxony. Uh, we have Kennedy University of Technology, uh, PUD Dresden University of Technology, and Leipzig University of Applied Science. Um, I would also like to draw your attention to a, a fourth university, which is uh, University of Applied Sciences Dresden, another university in Dresden. Uh, and the reason is because I saw that some of the participants are actually interested in bachelor programs, studying electrical engineering on the bachelor's level. So this is not our major focus in our today's presentation, but this university offers an English taught bachelor's program. Uh, to just give you an idea, most bachelor programs in Germany are German taught, not English taught. So English taught electrical engineering programs uh, are quite rare. This is a very good opportunity for you to start out studying electrical engineering right ahead. Uh, the special design of this program is that they actually start out in the first two years, they teach their program in English and then they slowly switch over in German. They expect you to study German from the very beginning on, and after two years, your German skills should be quite evolved, and then you can continue studying in German and also do your final thesis in German. So this might be a program quite interesting to students who are interested in bachelor programs taught in English. Um, the other very good in information, very interesting information, especially to our Taiwanese and Indian participants today, is new scholarship and new funding programs. So the very important program is the Saxon Student Mobility Program, uh, which is supporting states in Saxony from one to 12 months. Uh, this can be a summer course, this can be a language training, this can be uh, the first year of your regular, uh, your regular uh, study program in Saxony. Um, 
The program is very flexible. You can apply for the program anytime, but you should apply three months ahead of your factual stay in Saxony. Um, you are very, very welcome to apply for this program. Uh, and afterwards, the other program I would like to introduce to you is the Georgius Agricola program. This program is designed to international students who are already studying in Saxony. Uh, if you have uh, very good grades, if you are an above average student uh, and you already studied in Saxony for one year, you can uh, apply for this program. And the idea is after you can be supported by a sex student mobility program for one year, you can get additional funding for another year. And as we know, a master's program in uh, Germany usually takes two years at least. So you can get funding for your stay in Saxony for two years just by applying for specific Saxon programs. Especially the first program is especially designed for Taiwanese and Indian students. Of course, DAD, the major host today, um, is also offering many other scholarship programs, but uh, maybe uh, Ms. Tao will introduce these programs to these programs afterwards. The same programs, you can see them here in Chinese language. Um, can quickly scan through. Um, if you are very interested in our three universities, and if you are Taiwanese, you'll have the chance to meet us in October, on the weekend of 19th and 20th of October, during the European Education Fair Taiwan, Ocho Chiao Yuchan, at the Taipei Wenza. Um, University of Chemnitz, uh, technically, uh, Chemnitz University of Technology, uh, here the Dresden University of Technology and uh, Leipzig University of Applied Sciences all will be represented during that event. And we are very, very happy to uh, talk to you person to person and give you additional advice. If you should be from the South, uh, actually, HGW. Uh, K Leipzig, Leipzig University of Applied Sciences, and me will also have uh, attend a little uh, university fair at National Chengdong University, Chengdong uh on Tuesday, the 22nd of October. So, welcome to these events. If you want to know more about studying Saxon, you're always welcome to contact me. And now, I really would like to hand over to my fellow presenters, and we will start with Professor Zichner. Thanks a lot, Mr. Chairman, for this very kind introduction. Please give me a second. I would like to share the slides. All right, uh, welcome everyone. It's a really pleasure for me to introduce to you electrical engineering and inform information technology at the University of Technology Cambridge. First of all, give me this, uh, the time uh, to introduce you again, the location. Uh, Mr. Goldberger showed us that we are in Europe, in the center of Europe. Uh, we have Germany and in the eastern part, the East Saxony uh, and Chemnitz and Dresden are two very important as well as Leipzig uh, cities uh, for studying electrical engineering. So uh, again, some information from Chemnitz to Dresden. It's only 79 kilometers far away. Uh, I mentioned that because Dresden is a hotspot for electrical engineering, for micro uh, mechanical systems. We have uh, bigger sized companies like Infinity and Bosch. And in the next year is also TSMC and also Global Foundry. So uh, we are a big family, so to say. Uh, next to these uh, bigger companies, we do have, of course, more, uh, more than 18,000 companies, small and medium size. So the future is also given here. From the university point of view, we are still growing as a university. Uh, we are looking for economic growth, for uh, innovative jobs and a lot of creation. So we are a very open-minded city, so to say. Uh, let's give me to you also some facts and figures, uh, facts and figures about the university itself. To give you a feeling, we have in total right now more than 8,000 students per year. So we have also, of course, international students from uh, 89 countries so far. And this is uh, a very good thing for us. We love that. 
in total, that means it's not related to electrical engineering, it's in total, we have 95 degree programs, uh, a couple of bachelors and masters. Give me a second, I would like to introduce to you also the electrical engineering part. So we have over uh, 170 professorships and electrical engineers, we have 16 of them. So we have more than 2000 employees to give you a hand. Uh, we have more than 1800 graduates. And interesting also, we have 104 doctorates and two applications completed in 2023. So and after the standard bachelor and master course, we offer our new yeah, people, the, the science, to become also a PhD, to be sure. So again, some more numbers. Uh, we have more than 1,400 publications. In this case, in 23, it's again year by year, a very new number. Next to education, we are also focusing on projects. It means not only is some stupid, simple education, we are looking for projects with a lot of international partners to going further and further from the technology point of view. Therefore, we also got money, in this case, more than 80 million euros from third party, very important for us. And finally, we are very pleased about the fact that we have more than 20 enterprises and we are quite good in yeah, getting some money. But more than, this is the only the old few picture of university in Chemnitz. Let's have a deeper look. So we have a couple of faculties. And of course, the most important for today is electrical engineering and information technology. But don't forget about the fact that we do have also the mechanical engineering, uh, mathematics, computer science, which is also a good place to be from my point of view. So let's start with our uh, topic for the day. A small picture, this is only one of a couple of parts of the university, quite new buildings. And I would to, like to start with the things we could offer. When I'm talking about offer, I'm talking about we would like, or we do teaching uh, content of the future. It's nothing old style, nothing boring. It's uh, right away the new stuff. Uh, of course, you will came in contact with all the technologies itself, not only personally by our friends, also with the professors. Uh, therefore, we have a very important step for us. Every prof uh, is getting in contact in case it's uh, needed. Uh, with the students to, to help him to teach him. So it's a very close family, so to say. It's very important for us. Uh, also, you can earn some money in parallel to the uh, studying because every professor is looking for some yeah, staff members uh, who uh, came in contact with a lot of yeah, interesting projects. And finally, and we are very proud about that, we have a uh, very modern modern equipment. We have a big sized uh, clean room at university. We have a high voltage laboratory. We have a high frequency echo chamber. We have a lot of stuff uh, on here. So, and with that, I would like now to hand over to what is possible to study. So Mr. Goldberger mentioned uh, about bachelor and master. Uh, so far, we do have these three bachelor courses. To be frank, so far there are all of them in German language, but at the beginning of next year, we are studying with the Electrical Engineering and Information Technology Bachelor in English language. So at next year, this is the English version. Uh, in case you would like to have more information, feel free to make a picture of this barcode or go to the website. Next to the standard version, which I studied years ago, you would imagine. Uh, we have now a lot of, a lot of more. Uh, beside that, electro mobility and renewable energy technology, which is very interesting. And also the biomedical engineering, which is a combination of the medical part and the engineering coming close together. Very cool from my point of view. And then I would like to switch over to the masters, and we do have a lot. So starting with the information and communication systems, a very classical thing. We do have, of course, microsystems and microelectronics, a huge portion here. Also, micro and nano systems, which is comparable, but in a detail, also different. Uh, we have the very new one, design and test for integrated circuit, which is also a big part of microsystems itself. We have the renewable energy engineering, 
we have energy and automated, uh, sorry, automation systems. We have, of course, electromobility because Saxony is also well known from all the days when it came to mobility. Biomedical engineering, that means the add-on from the bachelor comes here with the master course. And last but not least, also embedded systems. So please do me a favor, in case you have any interest, take your time and Google for that, because I do not have the time to introduce all of them individually, but nothing at all, it's not a big deal. Google for that, you will find all the information also in English. The next thing, what I would like to do is not to go deeper in the course itself, I would like to show you some highlights. The highlights uh, of our faculty are, uh, of course, people. We the people, and with, with people, I'm meaning you as a new the yeah, uh, science. So we have of a lot of awards and also the new people becoming awards with uh, their master thesis or bachelor thesis. We do have also very interesting, one of the most cited research in the world, Professor Schmidt, a colleague of mine. Uh, he's a very good uh, guy, very interesting. As a professor, he also teach, of course. And of course, we do have more awards. So you as a person, you are on the focus. Uh, that's a good thing. Yeah? And finally, of course, this is uh, also very important, you can have fun. You can have fun in different uh, yeah, side parts uh, together with other colleagues, uh, which is close to the study, but not a part of the study. It's your free time. You can use whatever you, uh, you can do, whatever you like. Choose it. You have a lot of possibilities at university in Chemnitz. So on the next uh, highlight, and then I have only two slides more at the end, is again the fact about the clean room. At the University of Technology Chemnitz, we have a so-called Center of Micro and Nanotechnologies. This is a part, a part of our university, and of course, a part of our faculty of electrical engineering. And look at that, we have a clean room with uh, 1,300 square meters. Of course, it's not the biggest in the world, to be frank, but it's for university, not bad. We have there over 80 experts, and of course, it's a very important number for you. We have a, right now uh, also 80 students and PhDs which are getting the chance to work over there to get experience, to become more and more engineer. Uh, and out of this work, we have a lot of publications, of course, official ones, uh, uh, worldwide, international ones, and this, is, and therefore, we are very proud. Also, in case you would like to have more information, Google for that with this link or this uh, screenshot here. And the very last uh, information I would like to give you next to the university itself, we have a very strong cooperation which research, with research institutes absolutely nearby. I'm talking about 100 meters far away. And this is only one example out of a couple. And this is the Fraunhofer Institute for Electronic Nanosystems, in short, ENAS. Again, one meter far away. And this is a very cool partner for us because as a university, we are doing teaching, we are doing basic research, and this basic research is hand over to Fraunhofer and they are doing the last steps, the application oriented research. And then we have finally a product in our hands and can hand over to any kind of customer. So everything is on one place. But do me a favor, please don't forget about Trist and Leipzig, all the very best places to be. Uh, came to Germany to have fun, to, to, uh, to uh, yeah, feel our passion. And with that, I would like to thank a lot for the attention, uh, for, the, for the attention, I'm sorry. And I, with that, I would directly hand over to my colleague, Professor Richter from uh, Trist. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Professor Zichner, for your uh, kind introduction. So I have to start my presentation. So I hope it works. So uh, I hope you can see uh, the presentation mode. Then uh, welcome again. And uh, I want to present in the next uh, roughly 10 minutes uh, TU Dresden. First of all, Dresden uh, is the uh, capital of the free state of Saxony and has about has about uh, uh, 560,000 inhabitants. Dresden 
uh, looks back to a long tradition of invention and innovation. You will see it a bit later. And Dresden is strategically well positioned in the heart of Europe, close to Poland, right, and the Czech Republic uh, on the south of Saxony. Dresden has a strong history and a good quality of life. First, Dresden is well known for its diverse cultural offers and rich history. Uh, Dresden is a very green and family-friendly city that offers high quality of life at moderate living costs compared to other cities uh, and areas in Germany. And close to the Elb Sandstone Mountains, its surroundings are extremely beautiful and offer a plethora of outdoor activities. Theo Dresden, among to the top five excellence universities in Germany, we have a bit more than uh, 30,000 students and additionally 6,000 uh, PhD students. Uh, and roughly we have more than 5,000 international students. We have um, uh, 126 degree programs and we are quite large. Uh, our uh, scientific and administration staff is uh, about 9,000 uh, people and we have 600 professors. Uh, our third party funding is quite uh, big. Uh, we have more than 300 million euros. Uh, and uh, in the last 10 years, uh, Dresden University of Technologies was the German university with the most patent applications. That means we are quite innovative. And we have also a lot uh, of spin off companies, roughly uh, 20 similar to uh, TU Chemnitz. Let us go to the Faculty of Electrical and Computer Engineering. First of all, we have a large history. Um, TU Dresden was founded in 1828 as Technische Bildungsanstalt. It was one of the first technical universities in Germany. Already in 1894, um, the Institute of Electrical Power Engineering was funded and 1911, the Institute of Low Voltage Engineering and Low Voltage Engineering uh, is the base of the Information and Communications um, Engineering. Uh, here, Dresden was one of the first places worldwide in that field. Currently, we are organized in 12 institutes with 28 full professors and one junior professorship. Uh, that means we are the fifth largest electrical engineering faculty in Germany with roughly 1,300 students and uh, 540 PhD students, 600 people scientific staff, and with approximately uh, uh, 42 million euro third party funding every year, uh, we are uh, by far the most successful electrical uh, engineering faculty in Germany in that field. We are extremely strong in research. We have uh, four uh, research topical units. Uh, electrical power engineering, electrical engineering, information and communications technology, and systems engineering. We have uh, six studies here at our uh, faculty. Of course, uh, very important is the study electrical engineering. It is a diploma study. It is a bit different from the bachelor and uh, master concept because you have to study five years and after the five years you will uh, receive the diploma. Uh, this is very unique uh, for Germany. Uh, this uh, study is given in German. 
Then we have information systems engineering uh, together with the Faculty of Computer Science. And we have the study, the international master study, nanoelectronic systems, which is given in English. Furthermore, we are active in renewable uh, energy systems, mechatronics, and also in biomedical technology. Maybe for you, uh, most interesting is our master study nanoelectronic systems. Here you can see, here you can see uh, the uh, general curriculum. You have uh, compulsory modules, elective modules you can uh, choose and the project works after that the master thesis and then you will receive the master of science uh, in the compulsory modules you will learn a lot about confidential computing we have excellent lab sessions semiconductor technology radio frequency integrated circuit here mostly the design the hardware and software co-design and you will uh, uh, learn about academic and scientific work um, the key areas uh, for the elective modules are first technology application and third the design in technology and um, you will learn a lot about innovative concept uh, for active nanoelectronic devices in principle microelectronic you know um, is uh, already nanoelectronics nanotechnology and material design uh, materials uh, for the 3d system integration we are extremely strong here in memory technology molecular electronics optoelectronics, uh, quantum mechanics, and more. In application, uh, we will uh, learn about the uh, foundations of the systems engineering, um, uh, signals and uh, systems, uh, the basic uh, uh, of communications, uh, the foundations of software uh, foul tolerance, uh, about wireless sensor networks, antennas, and radar systems here with a strong focus not only uh, on uh, mobile communication, but also in the area of uh, biomedical uh, systems and so on. And Dresden has also a large or big strengths in the field um, of uh, the design of systems here, both uh, analog design um, and uh, digital design, but also the design of um, systems based on new materials and um, uh, systems based on new uh, system architectures. Yeah, and you uh, can um, um, pick up uh, the key area which is of uh, most interest for you. Yeah, then the study of electrical engineering uh, has uh, so-called study branches currently uh, exclusively in German, but uh, we will um, give the most of these uh, study branches as master courses in future also uh, in English. That is electrical power engineering, then the device uh, micro and medical technology, microelectronics, that is an extremely strong field, then also the information technology. Uh, one of our clusters of excellence are related on that topic, and automation and control engineering. What uh, can you do in uh, Dresden, in Germany? Uh, um, uh, after the study, uh, you have ex excellent research opportunities, for example, as a PhD student or even as a researcher, because Dresden uh, is a science and innovation campus. Uh, Dresden is the second largest research location in Germany. Uh, uh, the number one is Munich, and then uh, comes 
Dresden. Here you can see um, uh, all the institutions which are located here uh, in Dresden. Uh, yeah, and uh, looking to industry, uh, Dresden is the heart of the Europe's uh, microelectronics. Uh, in Saxony, not only Dresden, you have already seen uh, Chemnitz is also strong uh, in that field uh, that is very important. And uh, uh, Dresden and Chemnitz and Leipzig are very close together uh, to Chemnitz, maybe 80 kilometers to Leipzig, mm, uh, a bit more than 100 uh, kilometers. Yeah, and we have uh, in uh, Saxony 2,500 companies in the field of microelectronics and informations and uh, information and communications uh, technologies with more than 70,000 uh, uh, people, uh, employees uh, working in that companies. Yeah, then I'm at the end, thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, please write me your question in the chat. Thank you. So now I want to hand over uh, to our colleague, uh, Mr. Robin Frinte from the Leipzig University of Applied Science. Thank you. Thank you very much for handing the microphone over to me. Yeah, my name is Robin Frinter from the Leipzig University of Applied Sciences, and um, I'm just going to show you my little presentation here. I hope you can see it all now. Um, I would like to go more into depth into the two study programs we have at our Leipzig University of Applied Sciences. We are not as big as the other two universities. We have approximately 6,500 students at our university, but we are a university of applied sciences, which means we have a huge practical approach to our studies. So whatever you learn in theory, you can also apply in our laboratories that we have in our institution. Um, Today, I would like to introduce to you two study programs. The first is electrical engineering and information technology. We offer the study program as a bachelor of engineering and it continues into a master of science. The second study program is industry engineering in combination with electrical engineering. Also here, bachelor of engineering and Master of Science. Today, I'm going to focus, as uh, Dr. Goldberger also said, more on the um, Master of Science programs um, and would like to start with the first one, Electrical Engineering and Information Technology. I would now introduce to you the modules you can expect in the study program. So first of all, all, this, all the students that uh, attend the study program have um, theoretical electrical engineering as one module. Um, there, the students acquire in-depth knowledge in the mathematical description of electric magnetic fields and wave fields. In addition, this module will teach the basic methods um, for calculating the fields um, in and around simple geometric arrangements. Um, the second one is advanced mathematics, and here you basically get the math uh, mathematical subjects that are important to yeah, for electrical engineering information technology, in particular, fundamental knowledge in functional and vector analysis and partial differential equations. Now I would like to go over to the, the fun part because you can specialize in four um, branches in electrical engineering and information technology. The first specialization throughout your studies in the master degree is electrical power engineering. Electrical power engineering refers to the field of engineering that deals with the development of technologies for the energy generation, the transmission, the distribution, and the usage of electrical energy. This includes also a wide range of applications from power generation in large power plants to the development um, of energy storage systems and the management of power grids. And here, as you can see, electrical power grids, these are all the modules that are mandatory in those specializations. The second uh, branch is automation technology. 
electrical engineers that specialize in automation technology deal with the measurement, control and regulation of automatically operated systems and production plans. The main goal here is to automate processes. So it's all about the sensors and actuators. You would also commission these machines and systems and check their functionality and adjust them if needed. Here you have systems engineering, embedded systems, distributed systems, factory automation. The third specialization is electronic circuit technology and signal processing that you like that people in Taiwan especially are quite familiar with. Um, the field of electronic circuit technology deals with the function of electronic components as well as the design and simulation of analog and digital circuits. They commission um, no, you will focus on the communication technology, computer vision, and biomedical technology, for example. And last but not least, the four, uh, the fourth special specialization is mechatronics. Um, the core of the mechatronics profile is the development of mechatronic systems, which are characterized by the interaction of mechanical, electrical, and information um, processing components. Modules such um, control theory, simulation-based design of mechatronic systems, robot control, and sensor technology um, are necessary skills for this um, specific branch. All of those four branches or specializations, they have a mandatory internship in the third semester, which is a great thing because there you can actually get some, yeah, practical um, experience in a company, in a local company around Saxony. Um, so you, everyone has to do uh, um, an internship and it gives you also um, like the, the first step of a little network you can build um, in order to find a job afterwards. The, and then the study program ends with the master module. You have to write your thesis at the end. And now I would like to go a bit more into job perspectives or areas uh, that you can work in later on. Um, for the electrical power engineering, you would work in areas like process engineering, supply engineering, um, renewable energy technology and power grid technology. Furthermore, you would plan um, construction and operation of power plants. Um, and industry energy supply systems, you would also develop util utilization methods for renewable energies and optimize energy savings or energy recovery, for example, in heating or air, air conditioning. The second branch, um, automa uh, automation technology, here you would work in production facilities, you would um, yeah, take part in the commissioning and the factory automation. You can enter a huge number of different industries when you work in the automation technologies, such as auto automotive, um, machine construction, manufacturing and packaging. Um, also in the food industry, there's everywhere automation technology involved um, where you can surely find a job around Saxony. And as we heard from my other colleagues, there are plenty of um, companies in our, yeah, in our state. The third one, mechatronics. Again, they the mechatronic engineers are mostly needed in any technical sector. Um, you would work, for example, in the automotive ex industry as well, um, the mechanical engineering and electrical engineering, but also the uh, medical technology and renewable energies. Mechatronic concepts are merely used in every majority and technical companies. Um, of the technical companies, regardless whether it's a small or medium-sized uh, company or a large corporation. The work of mechatronic en engineers is extremely diverse and um, you would work in, you can work in the development, in design, production and manufacturing, or even in technical sales, if this is of interest from you, uh, of you. Um, and the third one, electric circuit technology and signal processing, you would work in the semiconductor industry or you can work there, you don't have to, um, but it's, yeah, there's a huge, there's TS, uh, TSMC, ESMC companies um, here. You can also work in the embedded uh, systems technology, communication systems and hardware design. And now I would just like to give you general information of the study program. It has four semesters in total. It starts uh, on the winter semester, always the 1st of October. 
the language of instruction is still German. We are trying to work on um, solutions where, um, yeah, where we can offer it in English. And the admission requirements, there was also a question here in the chat, I think admission requirements here is a bachelor's degree uh, that is related to electrical engineering and information technology. You would have to apply through uni assist, but we can also discuss this later and a German language proficiency is required of a level of uh, C1, which is, yeah, which is quite high um, to study here in Germany. And now I would like just shortly go into the other study program that we also offer. It's industrial engineering in combination with electrical engineering. It's also a master of science. And here you have basically a part, which is the economic part. You have micro uh, macroeconomics, financial and management accounting, uh, marketing, industry, marketing, personal management and leadership and strategic management. So this is all the economical side of this in industrial engineering study program. Leadership is also quite important because uh, industrial engineers, they often work in leading positions um, in companies. And then you have the uh, technology on the other side of it. So there you have efficient use of energy, theoretical uh, electrical engineering, um, electrical power grids, electrical systems. So kind of the similar, like similar to our electrical engineering uh, study program, but it does not go into depth of um, yeah, of electrical engineering as much. It more it, it's more about giving you um, the foundation of um, the technology behind processes, which is very um, useful when you work in the industry. And then comes the integration of both uh, for both of it. So as the integration, so your goal as an industrial engineer basically is to optimize technical and uh, technical operations to ensure maximum productivity and the profitability as an interdiscipl interdisciplinary science industrial engineering combines economics with classic engineering so here you would have integration in the integration module you will have statistics entrepreneurship innovation and technology management um, as well as a mandatory internship again so we are all about the practical approach to our sciences. So therefore also here you will have an, a mandatory internship. And this shows you again, like that the integration module is there to bring both economics and technology together. And it will finish off with a master module. Here also some job perspectives um, you can work in after you have finished your studies. Um, as you can see, it's huge. It's the automation, uh, automotive, um, aviation and space industry, information technology, energy supply industry, planning and engineering offices, medicine technology, telecommunication and media industry. So it is um, yeah, almost endless where you can work with an industry as an industrial engineer with the special uh, specialization in electrical engineering. Um, and this is just like now again, a general information about um, the study program is also four semesters. It gives you 120 uh, credit points that we have here in Europe. It's the ECTS. Uh, the semester start again, winter semester, 1st of October. Language of instruction is German. The admission requirements is a bachelor's degree related to industrial engineering and German language proficiency again is a C1 level. So all the study programs at our university uh, require a C1 German language proficiency. My name is Robin Frinter. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Um, I work um, in the recruitment of international students. I, I'm also in the application process, admission process and enrollment. So if you have any questions regarding to this, I'm not an electrical engineer specialist, um, but I can give you some general information about it. Um, and yeah, would like to open up the question round now. The usual mistake. Mr. Frinter, thank you very much for your very insightful presentation. Also, thanks to Professor Zichner and Professor Rich, uh, Richter for your presentations. Special thank goes to DAD Mollian for hosting this event and making everything possible. Um, now we will try to answer your questions in the chat, but I saw there's many questions. We'll see how much we can manage. One of the very first questions I would like to directly answer, and this question is uh, the question on tuition and living cost during studying. The very great news for Germany in general, and especially Saxony, 
public universities, state universities do not have tuition fee. What you have is a so-called semester fee. Um, this is a small kind of registration fee. Uh, usually after paying this registration fee, which is of 200, 250 euros, something like that, uh, you also can use public transport in the city or in the region. Uh, you can use university equipment, sports centers, etc. So this fee, of course, is very worthwhile. This one you have to pay. Um, living fees vary, but Saxony, luckily, is one of the states where living fees are relatively lower, especially compared to crazy cities like Munich or uh, Stuttgart, uh, where living Hamburg can be very expensive. Trace will see what the TSMC investment is going to do to the city, but currently it's re still relatively affordable. So Professor Richter, I think, also already answered dormitories usually are something like 200 to 500 euros, depending on the condition. Um, double rooms are, of course, much cheaper than single dorms, and apartments, again, are much more expensive. But it's relatively affordable to study in Saxony. Then one question I saw very often is the question on language requirements. Mr. Frinder said C1 is a uh, must. Uh, Professor Zichler, Professor Richter, do you agree? Uh, depends on the course. Mostly we have B1 to B2 as a requirement. You can also just say mm -hmm. uh, like a C1 requirement is necessary for um, studying directly at our university in the study program but we do if you apply for example with a b1 or b2 language certificate you have the option to join a um, a, a german language course um, at Sittau, which is uh, our partner university so this uh, is an option to um yeah give a thorough english uh, language uh, german language proficiency um course that you can study afterwards um, directly at the university or apply for it with a C1 certificate. And I forgot to mention in a couple of courses also there is no German language needed. It's only the B2 of English, and that's it. So it depends on the course. Double check that, please. Mm -hmm. Very important. So of course, for English taught programs, you usually do not have a German language requirement. Uh, German taught programs, of course, need German language requirement, and usually that will be C1 level. And to just give you an idea, C1 level is a relatively high level of skills. Uh, it means that you are able to understand the professor's presentation on its specific subject. You are able to actually write your own papers in German language. So that needs quite a while to reach that kind of level. But others have done it, you can do it as well. So. Um, a very specific question, I think, on TOD Dresden. Uh, the student did a degree in computer science at Lancaster in Leipzig, I guess a bachelor's degree, and now would like to study electrical, uh, electronic electrical engineering at TU Dresden. Mm -hmm. In uh, principle, that is possible, but as uh, our uh, study office will check uh, do you have all um, lectures you need to study electrical engineering? And I'm not really hopeful. Here, no? uh, I think you have uh, to take uh, some additional courses, uh, maybe here in Dresden or at uh, our current stay. Um, uh, but uh, you can discuss that. Uh, with the uh, uh, people of the study offices. Huh? Here, Mrs. Tetzlaff uh, uh, here in Dresden. Another very similar question also to Tier Dresden and probably with the same answer, directly asked the study coordinators at Tier Dresden. Uh, the student is studying a uh, bachelor's degree automation and control of te technological processes and wants to proceed a master's in system engineering. Probably directly Exactly. Mm. Awesome. Um, sorry. 
Um, there's one student asking on being an exchange student. How to become an exchange student to uh, any of the university? Maybe we start with Mr. Frinde. How can you come and visit SDWK, no, HWK Leipzig uh, as an exchange student, Leipzig University of Applied Sciences? So as an exchange student, there is the possibility that you can um, you can be elected by your university. It's need, it needs to be like a partner university as well to us, but this can be also, I think, arranged uh, if there's some sort of um, yeah connection there. Um, and then you would have to apply in order to study um, at least one or two semesters at our university. Um, and this also goes through a colleague of mine, but um, yeah, you can, if you have further questions about it, then you can definitely write us, um, yeah, and we can answer your questions. But it's one or two semesters that you can do here as an exchange um, student if you are elected from your university. Exactly. Usually you have to check up your university. Do they have a cooperation with exactly. any of the Saxon universities? And then you can apply to become an exchange student. Um, another question on B1 German level. Is it possible to apply it with a B1 German level, uh, for example, at uh, Chemnitz University of Technology, uh, Professor Zichler? Yes, of course, again, it depends on the course itself. Again, in case it's a master course, which is hold in English, there is no need to have any uh, German uh, level but there are a couple of them they do have a level it depends but no panic so also without any english skill, uh, german skills you are of course welcome one student is asking on english taught uh, programs in electrical engineering in Dresden. probably you missed my introduction well, the one good news is that Chemnitz is building up uh, English taught programs, um, so you will be able to study there. Uh, Leipzig University of Applied Sciences is also looking into the uh, possibility of uh, providing English taught programs. And uh, I mentioned the program which already exists by HDW Dresden, uh, uh, English taught program, uh, first two years English. And then it switches over into German taught program. Uh, with reason, HTW Dresden is having such a program. You can check it out on the internet or you can take contact with me later on the email. Oh, um, yeah, this is a Taiwanese student uh, who is asking a question on his grades. Um, so this is a specific Taiwanese question, so I guess I will directly answer. His university it entrance exams didn't hit the mark of 53. Can he still apply to the uh, Technical University of Dresden? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is no. The basic requirement is that you have to hit the mark of 53 if you want to directly study in Dresden. You can take a foundation class in Germany and then apply for a TOD Dresden, but directly you cannot uh, start studying in Germany. This is a specific regulation for Taiwanese students. Taiwanese students, if their average mark is higher than 53 at the university entrance exam, directly from high school can apply studying in Germany. Unfortunately, for the other, most other countries in the world, uh, high school students cannot directly apply for studying in Germany. Um, I have a list of uh, additional questions here. Um, is it possible to do a second master's degree in Germany? So obviously the student did a master's degree in his home country. Can he do a second degree? Uh, maybe Professor Richter. Hmm. Uh... Um, 
uh, 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 which question uh, do you mean? I have. Uh, uh, so obviously, a student did a master's degree in his home country, and now he would like to do a second master's degree. Uh, is that possible? Yes, uh, that is uh, absolutely possible. But as uh, the same procedure, we uh, are checking. Um, um, do you fulfill all requirements we need? Um, have you um, already uh, um, uh, realized all the uh, uh, lectures and uh, the topics uh, necessary for that? If not, uh, you can study here in Dresden and you have, however, um, to uh, take additionally uh, the uh, uh, courses here in Dresden, which are necessary. Uh, if it is a small amount, when we have, however, uh, five or even six uh, or whatever, uh, a lot of such uh, lectures, you have to uh, 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 carry out additionally, uh, additionally, then it is, of course, impossible. Huh? It should be uh, quite good fit. Uh, our requirements. Okay, thank you very much. So basically, of course, you can do a second master's. One thing I have to point out, usually funding programs and scholarship programs will not fund a uh, second same level degree. So um, if you want to do a second master's, you usually cannot apply for, for example, a DAD scholarship, because the idea is we only want to support students who want to improve their academic uh, training. Job perspectives after bachelor's degree in Germany. Um, I think Mr. Frinte already talked a little bit about job perspectives. Would you like to elaborate? Yes. Um, so in, in general, even with a bachelor's degree, um, it is possible to start um, working in a company when you have like the specific field that, the, that it's needed for like a, a job description. Um, however, I think a master's degree is always a bit better to also get a bit uh, uh, yeah, a better salary at the end. Um, but it is also possible to find jobs uh, for when, when you only have a only have a bachelor's degree. Um, the good thing is that um, you can do a lot of internship here in Ger internships in Germany in companies. And there, once you have your foot in like a company and they like you, uh, it's also a lot about like networking in this relation, I would say. So, yeah, there, therefore it's, it's definitely possible um, and not impossible. Yeah. For sure, electrical engineering in the region, especially the semiconductor field uh, in the region is booming. So there's plenty of job opportunities. Yeah. One thing, especially if you plan to work in Germany for a German company, think about your German skills. Perfectly fine to do an English degree, but you should also train some German because if you want to work in a German language environment, you should be able to speak some German. But there's plenty of job opportunities in the region, that's for sure, in this field. That's also maybe what I can like elaborate a little bit more. Like a lot of the employers in Saxony, they are German speaking companies. So we are international, like we are trying to, um, yeah, get the international, like uh, to international those companies as well. But most of them, they are German speaking companies. So it's definitely good if you speak German. Uh, I think Mr. Professor Zichner also wanted to say something. Uh... I'm so sorry. I want to, to say thanks a lot and goodbye. I have to leave to another very important meeting. I'm so sorry. I wish all of you the very best for the future. Germany and Saxony is a very good place to be in. It's up to you. Uh, with that, Bruce, I would like to, th like to thank you also, Ms. Goldberger uh, and the DAD. See you next time. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>